Since posting my video last week, people have come forward who are either angry or confused or supportive or a combination of all three. And I'm here for all of it. I want to be clear and straightforward about what it is I'm doing as heliocentric. I want to offer a defense today for why I believe it's possible to do what I'm doing, to be an atheist making Christian art. And my defense for doing what I'm doing is one that primarily comes from church history. So for this discussion, we'll be rewinding all the way back to the fourth century. During this time, Christianity was still an illegal religion in the Roman Empire. And under the emperor Diocletian, there was a new wave of Christian persecution that was happening. Occasionally, Christians were put to death during this time, but much more common was the practice of Roman officials going to priests and demanding that they turn over their copies of the scriptures. Now, some priests would hold their ground and refuse to cooperate. However, others capitulated. And these Christians who compromised on their standing became known as traitors. There was a looming question in the church over what to do about these priests who had compromised on their faith. And equally as important and maybe more convoluted was what to do with the Christians who had received sacraments from these priests. There was a sect of Christian rigorists who emerged out of this conflict. They were known as the Donatists. The Donatists believed that if a Christian received a sacrament from a priest who was morally compromised, then the sacrament was invalid. And so the Donatists often became known as the rebaptizers. Essentially, they said, well, if somebody was baptized by a priest who was sinful, then his baptism is invalid, and he should be rebaptized by a priest who is in right standing with God. This became an international conflict in the church, and the heart of the issue was, is a sacrament holy because it is holy, or is it holy because the person who gave it to you is holy? Donatism was ultimately condemned as heresy, and prominent bishops such as St. Augustine of Hippo were at the forefront of fighting against this idea. The church said categorically that something is holy because it is holy, not because the person who gave it to you is holy. We see modern examples of this all the time. Let's say you or a friend had a youth pastor who cheated on his wife, or let's say that you had a priest who ended up falling into some sort of sexual scandal or you had a believing evangelist who later recanted his faith. None of those actions negate the truth of what they said. If they said something true, it's true because it's true. So how does this apply to my own music? First and foremost, if you are a believer and you want to listen to my music, that's a decision to be made between you and the Holy Spirit. And I'm not here to interfere with that. That being said, I've gone through my lyrics very carefully to make sure that there is nothing not edifying in them for a Christian audience. My song, To Those Who Found Rest, is about a quote from St. Augustine about the ineffable love of God. My song, Rome, is about the prayers of St. Ignatius of Antioch, who prayed that the body of Christ might be unified even as his physical body was being torn limb from limb. My song, God of Apathy, is a scathing critique against the heresy of docetism, and my song, God of Empathy, is a celebration of the physical incarnation of Christ. My song, Gabriel, is about the words of the archangel to the Virgin Mary. And my song, Thicket, is about Abraham sacrificing the ram caught in the thorns that was a foreshadowing of the sacrifice of Christ. So if anyone out there is looking for a heretical smoking gun in my lyricism, you won't find it. <laughs>